Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon, founder and creator of KaramMD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about a really, really important topic, a topic that can save you time and money and ultimately defy skin aging. Because there's a lot of common mistakes and misconceptions that people are making when it comes to management of their skin. And these 10 things that I'm going to mention one by one, if you're doing them, you are in that group where you're basically not getting the most out of your skincare and the most out of your skincare routine, and you need to stop them right away. So without further ado, let's break them down. All right, so number one, that is using moisturizers, expensive moisturizers you get at department stores and different places that basically have no active ingredients. They're just a beautiful bottle with a very elaborate message associated with it. And at the end of the day, it's just a moisturizer. Expensive moisturizers, quote unquote anti-aging creams in that category, basically do nothing other than fundamentally moisturize your skin. And you really do not need an expensive, high-end, luxury moisturizer if the goal is fundamentally just to moisturize your skin. So, honest to God opinion, do not fall for the fancy bottles and the expensive packaging. At the end of the day, look what's inside. If it doesn't have active anti-aging ingredients, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, you're basically overspending on something that is essentially doing nothing productive for your skin. And honestly, this has always been one of my pet peeves when I walk through a, uh, a high-end department store and you see these bold messages about, you know, rejuvenating cream or this or that cream, and then you look at it and at the, at the end of the day, it's basically, you know, it's a $300 bottle for simple moisturizer that if it was packaged in something different and sold in, in Walmart or Target, you'd be spending about $14 for it. So keep that in mind, look, and you're gonna become very savvy at the end of this to understand what you're actually getting. Number two, not using retinol if you are serious about anti-aging and not using it because you're afraid that you can't go out in the sun if you use retinol. This is a common, common misconception, a total myth. The fact of the matter is, there is probably not a more powerful, more important anti-aging active ingredient that you need to include in your skincare routine if in fact you are trying to reverse aging changes, that is loss of collagen, pigmentation, all around just bringing more uh, cellular growth and life to the skin and working that at the cellular level because you're afraid that you can't use it if you go in the sun. Now remember, this is a very, very important piece. You should always use sunscreen, period. You should use it when you go out. If you're using retinol in addition, you're gonna use a sunscreen, you'll be totally fine. So don't let that become a factor in your decision. Number two, the first couple weeks of using a straight retinol cream, your skin is gonna get red, it's gonna get scaly, and you might mistake that for sensitivity to sun. That's a one or two week acclimation phase that you're gonna to have to go through, and then your skin will have totally normal response when you go out. My wife, for example, she is literally out an hour or two doing a walk outside, Every single day, she wears sun protection, she wears a hat, she goes out and she's been using retinol on her skin for over 15 years. So no reason not to use it, especially because of fear of going out and about in the sun. Uh, number three, using sunscreen that is blended into makeup. I'm not gonna call this a pet peeve of mine because I don't want everything to be a pet peeve. Everything on this list is sort of troublesome to me, but this one especially because there's probably no more important step that you can take to protect your skin from aging changes than sun protection. I mean that, I mean, it's like a non-starter. If you're doing anything, whether you're doing lasers, you're doing a good skincare routine, but then you're getting blasted by the sun on your face, Trust me, you're basically at the best treading water. If not, you're still losing footing. So it's such an important step, and it's so critical that you get it right, and you use the right product, you use it and reuse it properly, that if it's blended into your makeup, and that is your only source of sun protection that you're using, 
no chance you're getting the proper amount of sunscreen on your skin to cover the way it needs to cover and re be reapplied the way it needs to be reapplied. So at the end of the day, it's better than nothing, no question, but I would feel a lot better for you if you use a dedicated mineral-based sunscreen all the time and use that in addition to powder makeup or whatever you're gonna put on over that. But don't try to you know, kill two birds with one stone and not get the, the proper and full protection that you can from the sunscreen. Number four, using lasers in our offices or anyone else's offices, but then not being on a good skincare routine and using good skincare habits at home on a regular basis. That is completely having the entire thing backwards and I can't tell you how many people do it that way. One or two times a year they drop thousands of dollars on a laser treatment or a laser series, but in the meantime, they're not using regular sun protection, they're not using actives on their skin, and as a result, you're basically getting these little bumps where you get some improvement in your skin, and then that time in between the, the lasers, you're essentially losing ground again. So think of lasers as like your, your boot camp, right? If, you're, if you wanna use a diet and exercise analogy, if you're really serious about getting your body in good shape, well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna eat well, you're gonna exercise every day, and then once in a while, maybe every few months, you're gonna kind of push your body to an extreme. You're gonna do a boot camp, right? Well, that is what lasers and things like that. In addition, they're really about solving specific problems in a window of time. So let's say you get an IPL series where you're removing all the brown spots off your skin, but guess what? New brown spots will, will reform unless you're suppressing those melanocytes with skincare components like retinol, vitamin C, and, and non-hydroquinone lighteners, and protecting your skin from more sun, which then produces more pigment. So you can see how backwards that is and how inefficient that is. So if you're gonna use lasers, you're gonna use chemical peels, by all means do them, they're great tools, but make sure that you're squared away with good daily skincare habits, sun protection, the use of a good regimen, and I'll explain what a good regimen looks like a little bit later. Number five, starting and stopping your skincare routine. Now, how many times in your life, in your history, have you gotten enthusiastic about anything, whether it is you know, a diet, whether it is a workout plan, whether it is a really good skincare routine that, that you know, an esthetician or a dermatologist or you know, you've learned from our site, and you put yourself in a position to win. You're doing the right things but then you stop. You do it for a few weeks, you do it for a few months, then you stop. Well, guess what? All of those gains that you have made start to drift backwards. Same thing with exercise, right? I mean, you go to the gym every day, you're going there, you're losing weight, you're building muscle, you're getting in shape, and then what happens for like a week, two weeks, three weeks, you say, ah, I'm not feeling it. Then it becomes a month, then all of a sudden it's like everything you've gained in that period of time is lost. Well, the skin is no different. At the cell level, when you're using active ingredients like retinols and vitamin Cs and growth factors and all those good things, what you're doing is you're turning on the cells that are producing collagen. And remember, skin aging is the loss of collagen. So you're producing and then you're building, you're strengthening the skin, you're improving the skin. And then those same cellular processes stop because you've stopped doing the things for your skin. So then all of a sudden you're going right back to where you started from. That's super inefficient. Trust me when I say this, the most important part of all is doing the right things, but doing them forever. If you do them forever, the skin is the one thing that you can personally defy without that much help. Like when somebody's face sags and their neck sags, I gotta get in there and do surgery and bring everything back up. There's nothing you can do at home to improve that, nothing. There's nothing you can do in an outpatient, in office setting, using non-surgical treatments, they can do that. But with the skin, it really does come down to sun protection, the use of active ingredients, use them regularly, good skin hygiene, good diet, off you go. Year after year after year, your skin gets better. So don't let yourself get into this habit, this pattern of starting and stopping and switching. And hopefully you'll learn what that means. Once you dial in and you have a good routine, stick with it, it will pay off, I promise you. I've seen it time and time again over my 20 year career. Number six, 
exfoliating too often or using harsh exfoliators. Now, exfoliating is very important, right? Because as we age, especially mature skin, starts to develop a layer of dead skin on the top, top layer of the epidermis called the stratum corneum. And that basically creates a dullness to the skin. I liken it to like the, the peels of an onion, you know, the outer layer of an onion is kind of dull and then you peel that back and you get this bright glistening layer. Well, the true layer of the skin, the bright layer is where you wanna be. The stuff up top is just the stuff that accumulates as we age and it fundamentally needs to be removed, right? That's exfoliation, that's the act of exfoliation. Now, what are your choices for exfoliation? Well, you've got chemical peels, you've got microdermabrasion, you've got abrasive type of things like some, you know, they use like little pieces of bamboo, they have some beads, those are fall under mechanical. The one that I personally, you know, love is a much more gentle approach, that's the polish, it's in our CaramMD set, and that uses enzymes, there are a lot of different enzymatic exfoliators. I'll explain why I like that generally better. But it comes down to this, the skin barrier, it's a layer that protects the outside and then gets into the deeper layers of the skin. That skin barrier, is very important that it's intact and healthy. What ends up happening is if you're using harsh abrasive methods, you're basically kind of abrading the, the surfaces and causing micro injury, causing a loss of oils, cause of you know a lot of different kind of things that ruin the, the overall healthy landscape of the surface of the skin. So although exfoliating in general is good to do, doing it too often is not good to do. So, a good thing can be a bad thing if you're doing it too often. And it, when it comes to exfoliation, that's the key. So I typically um, you know, recommend anywhere from, depending on the type of exfoliation you're doing, like with the enzymatics, two to three times is what we recommend with polish. The abrasive types, it might be like, you know, once every two weeks, once every week at the most, you know, but depending on how light it can be, but you definitely don't wanna do it too often. All right, so keep that in mind. Too much of a good thing can ruin your skin barrier and that's something that should be avoided. Number seven, and this is a huge one and you saw me allude to it earlier. Number seven is about sun protection and using it every day. Too many people are inconsistent with the use of sunscreen. Right, it's like they use it on the weekends when they're gonna be out, they put it on in the morning and off they go all day long. Well couple things. Number one, there's no greater impact on skin aging than sun. Sun breaks down collagen, causes pigmentation, causes dryness. It is a massive, massive player in your skin aging. Of course, genetics and, and hormones and all that stuff all play a role too. But <clears throat> if you take the sun out of the equation, you would be amazed what people's skin looks like. I see it all the time because I have patients literally from all over the world and those who are you know, who travel to see me from the Northwest or travel to see me from climates and regions that don't see a lot of sun, their skin looks amazing, even when they're in their 60s. It's incredible, they're supple, they're thick, they're free of pigment. So no doubt, and we all know this, it's about 70% of, of, of skin aging is, is, comes from sun exposure. So if you're gonna be, you know, really mindful about what you do, you gotta basically put mineral sunscreen on, get out, out in the morning, reapply it later on, be consistent. And one of the biggest mistakes people make is they judge, they look at the, the sky and they're like, okay, it's kind of cloudy, it's rainy, I don't need to put it on screen. Well, yeah, the, the UV index might be lower on those type of days, but it's not zero. And it's still an accumulation of sun exposure that causes all these things that we're talking about. So if I were you, and this is something my wife has been doing literally for 15 plus years, is just be super consistent with the use of sun protection. Use it regularly, daily, reapply as needed, wear hats, etc. Remember, your body, if you wanna get some vitamin D, etc., let your body do the conversion. Why do you have to let your face do it? You know, your face is what you see all the time, you can't cover it. Let your face, you know, look as, as youthful as it can. Let your body do some of that work. Let your legs do it, if, if that's important to you. But cover your face with sun protection, with hats, etc. All right, that's key number one even on cloudy days. Make sure you don't start without that step being in, in place. Number eight is a very common, common mistake, and that is the use of a foaming cleanser. It feels good, right? Get a big lather, bubbles going everywhere. It feels like this is like how cleaning should, should look and feel. Well, guess what? Those bubbles, that foam that you're, you're creating is abrasive at the microscopic level of the skin. Abrasiveness creates 
The damage that we're talking about causes dryness. Dryness is not what you want. You don't want to basically create an environment where your skin is required to respond to dryness by producing more and more oil, which is what it will do, because more and more oil, especially in a dry skin environment, and especially if it's not being exfoliated properly, leads to clogged pores. Clogged pores lead to dilated and large pores. Then you start this entire cycle. Dry skin cracks and breaks. It looks like you have more lines and wrinkles. Plus, you're setting up the grounds for pore production, leading to an, in, uh, enlarged pores when they get clogged by more and more sebaceous gland function. And I wanna get into the weeds on this. Just know this. Use a gentle, non-foaming cleanser. Now, it takes a minute to get used to because trust me, when we developed Rinse, which was a non-foaming cleanser, it's a gel-based non-foaming cleanser. Even for me, I mean, I was used to using a foaming cleanser before that. It was very, very hard to get used to. You feel like, oh, am I really getting a proper cleansing? Trust me, you're getting a great cleansing. You're also creating an environment where your skin's not inflamed and it's not getting dry and it's not breaking down and doing all the things that I just mentioned. So make sure you're using a gentle, gel-based, non-foaming cleanser. And that becomes your only cleanser you need. You don't need a nighttime, daytime, this and that, uh, whatnot. I mean, all of that is, is quite frankly nonsense. Just a simple daily cleanser that fits into that parameter, you'll be good to go, believe me on this. And it also sets up everything else that you put on your skin afterwards, because if your skin gets inflamed, the products you put on your skin afterwards are not gonna be able to penetrate the way they ideally should, and it just creates a lot of sort of non-starting issues going forward. So it's a very important skincare step is to properly cleanse the skin. And by the way, do it twice a day, morning and night. That's the best regimen for, for skin cleansing. As long as it's gentle, you can definitely do it that way. Number nine. Vitamin C. So vitamin C, both orally and topically, are extremely important in skin aging, and I'm gonna explain why. Vitamin C, like retinol, is a powerful active ingredient. It's an antioxidant, which is really important. It's a stimulator of collagen, which is extremely important. It's also a reducer of pigment production at the, at the cellular level, which is very important. So topical vitamin C, extremely important to be included as part of the kind of like powerhouse active ingredients that you need on your skin to defy the changes that come along with aging, right? And that's why, quite frankly, we literally dedicated step two of the trifecta to vitamin C because I wanted like literally the best vitamin C available to become its dedicated step. What's important is that oral vitamin C is also necessary. Why? Because collagen, as it's being stimulated by these active ingredients or the lasers you do, etc., the collagen requires oral vitamin C in order to become produced. So a key component in collagen synthesis is vitamin C, in addition to copper and zinc. We did a whole video on nutritional aspects when it comes to skin, which I highly recommend you watch, in addition to all these other um, great Skin School videos, but make sure that you are both using a topical vitamin C and you are consuming oral vitamin C. Because I think one of the interesting mistakes people make is they, they take collagen peptides, they're doing all this good stuff to actively stimulate their skin, but they hardly get any vitamin C in their diet, which is not common to avoid vitamin C, but it's something that I want you to be conscious of to make sure that you're you know, drinking some orange juice or taking a supplement or you know, doing something that you know has vitamin C in it. So that isn't something that's really minimally used in your body because you need it for a lot of different things. You just need enough of it to where your skin can use it when it needs to build its collagen production and all the other things in your body that need collagen production too, which is like in your joints and your, and your muscles and everything else. So make sure vitamin C is a part of your daily, daily routine. All right, number 10. This might sound counterintuitive, but a lot of people get hung up on this, oh, I have dry skin, I have oily skin, and they don't use a moisturizer when they have oily skin. So here's the story behind this, and this, this is gonna take probably a little bit of thinking. I know it's like the last thing I talked about, so just, just bear with me here and, and try to understand this with me. Oil production happens at the sebaceous glands within our skin. Oil production comes up, it gets onto the surface, then you have, you have oil. Now, if you have oily skin and you add oil to your regimen, squalene, lipid complexes, et cetera, or even just hydrating your skin with like hyaluronic acid, what ends up happening is the production of the sebaceous glands gets reduced because there's already oil there. It's like, okay, your skin is nice and moisturized. It has 
all the oil that it needs because it's getting it from an external source, I don't need to produce as much of it anymore. So what ends up happening is natural oil production decreases because you're providing it. So that leads to actually less dry skin. Now on the flip end, let's say you truly do have dry skin. Well, taking oils on top of it, taking hyaluronic acid on top of it, obviously is gonna solve that issue for you. Because if your own sebaceous glands and your own moisture mechanisms aren't able to keep up with it, well guess what? It's fine because you're, you're able to get it from an external source. So this is, was a really, really interesting thing. So when I was developing the trifecta, I've always heard about like, oh, identify yourself as a dry skin, oily skin, this and that. And the more I studied it and the more I learned about it, I was like, you know what? That's all nonsense too. There's a lot of stuff that, that is just waste of time and energy. It doesn't matter if you're dry or oily skin. Either way, by bringing in moisture from, from external sources, you're gonna create a balance and equilibrium that is gonna be ideal. Ideal balance and equilibrium means that your pores don't get dilated, you don't get those big pores because you're pr producing less, which is really, really important. And ultimately, if you're exfoliating and doing all that stuff, obviously your skin, the pores are gonna be at the best shape possible. You're gonna minimize the pr presence and size of pores, but also by moisturizing and bringing oils in, your skin's gonna look more supple, look more plump, fine lines and wrinkles will decrease, the skin will look more, more youthful. All of that comes by maximizing that balance. So recognize this, don't shy away from lipids and you know, like squalene, like I said, lipid, like in, in the trifecta, we have a number of different lipids that we add into it, it's called a lipid complex. We also have hyaluronic acid that brings in moisture. So there's a lot of things that we put in to illuminate that brings in that, that moisture, which is extremely important. But for a lot of people who don't understand that, they're gonna shy away from it, and then they're just gonna, it just, their body's producing more and more and creates a big problem. All right, so that was the top 10 common mistakes or things that you should stop immediately if you wanna take great care of your skin. Believe me, every one of those things happen constantly and you managing it this way is gonna really, really set you apart from the pack. And just know that all of this stuff was in a top of mind when I developed the trifecta. And uh, if you wanna learn more about it, check out our website at uh, caramdskin.com and you'll learn a lot about it. Follow our Instagram as well. Getting this right will pay off big time in the future, and uh, make sure you, you share this with some friends and family, keep them out of trouble as well. And uh, once again, thank you so much. Make sure if you have any questions, you drop them below. I'd love hearing it, love to get your feedback and ideas for other videos in the future. Let me know some topics that you guys would like to know about. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, so uh, you get more content like this and for facial rejuvenation material, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you again, Dr. Karen.